see some of y'all shout. Some of y'all shout at different things. See, some, some of you men, when you see a pretty woman, you shout. Don't shout me down. Some of you women, when your husband comes home with a bonus and he has some extra cash, that's when you shout. But when you start reading this book and you discover who he is, and the promises and the blessings and the benefits that are available to you because of this word, because of his, the price he paid on the cross. We have a lot to shout about. You see, if you're saved, you were on your way to hell, to a devil's hell. And if you gave your heart to him and you know that he redeemed you, that's something to shout about. If you've ever been sick in your body and you read the word that said, by his stripes you were healed, which manifests to I am healed right now, you've got something to shout about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you were addicted to drugs and alcohol and you've been delivered, you've got reason to shout. If you had a death sentence, but he delivered you, you've got reason to shout. If you've ever been in jail, but you're not in jail today, you've got reason to shout. If your babies were on their way to hell, but they got saved, you've got a reason to shout. Thank you, Jesus. If your babies are not yet saved, but you read this book, and you know that you can declare a thing over their life, and you have spiritual authority over their life, you begin to declare, they're going to be saved. My baby is saved. My baby is saved. You've got a reason to shout now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Turn to somebody and say, hey, hey, the devil has tried to steal my shout. The devil has tried to steal my shout. But look back at him and say, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm, I'm back. back. Somebody ought to shout, I, I've been quiet long enough. 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 I've been enough. silent long enough. I've been silent The long devil enough. has tried to silence me. The oh, devil has yeah. tried to shut me up. The devil has tried to steal my praise. The devil has tried to steal my testimony. The devil has tried to steal my babies. The devil has tried to steal my good health. The devil has tried to rob me. I'm back. Makes me want to shout. Last week, the devil tried to steal Chanel's mama. She had a stroke, a blood clot, and diagnosed with COVID, diagnosed with COVID the same day. And when you start getting those reports, the devil wants to look at you and say, what you got to say now? But by the end of the first day, the blood clot was gone, the effects of the stroke were gone, and now she's out of the hospital. I believe I could shout. Hallelujah. See, 
See, John chapter 10, John chapter 10 says, the thief, look at your neighbor and say, I know who he is. John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his plan. That's his agenda. That's his purpose. That's his motive in the earth. That's his assignment. But see, some of you stop right there. You didn't read the rest of the verse. Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundant. When you understand that Jesus came so you could have abundant life. When you understand abundant life is not just getting by. Abundant life is not just existing. Abundant life is not just going through the motions. Abundant life is not just existing until you can get to the next paycheck. Abundant life is being full and running over. So full that when you bump into somebody, they, they get some of what you've got. Look at your neighbor and shout. Shout now. Shout now. Makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout. shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, See, some of y'all already know what's in a shout. You, you know there's more to shouting than just opening your mouth and saying something. You know that when you begin to shout, something happens in the spirit realm. You know that when you, you begin to shout, your faith begins to increase. You understand that when you begin to shout, you are a warrior. You are a soldier of the Most High King, and the anointing comes upon you. You understand that throughout the Bible, the Bible says, lift up a shout. Make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and shout before Him. The devil's been trying to steal the shout in the church for a long time. And if he can steal your shout, he can steal your victory. If he can steal your shout, he will steal your faith. If he can steal your shout, he will steal your turnaround. If he can steal your shout, he'll take everything that's precious to you.
See, your words are important. Your mouth is important. What you say, Marilyn, what you say. Come here and just say that one time. I, I like the way you say it. Just stand up here and say it. What you say, what you say is important. Proverbs 18, 21 tells me, life and death is in the power of my tongue. Life and death. Oh, you didn't get that. See, if you did, if you'd got that, you would have shouted right then. Life and death. Your Bible says this book, if you still have one, this book says life and death is in the power of your tongue. What you say. It's in the power of your tongue. What are you saying? Who are you speaking life to? What are you speaking death to? Are you speaking death to your finances? Are you speaking death to your body? Are you speaking death to your job, to your kids, to your marriage, to your relation? What are you speaking death? What are you speaking life to? Because life and death is in the power of your tongue. This is all free. I'll just pause right here and say I appreciate the cops I appreciate the cops because that, that was a pitiful applause for the folks that give their life and put their life on the line for you to be free for you to live safe oh I know there's some bad ones there's bad plumbers they're bad preachers they're bad doctors in every profession but there are some great cops in this country. Come on, somebody, shout yes. And I thank God for them. And we open up this building on Tuesday nights for cops and first responders to come in here and worship God and have church. Amen. They have cop church here on Tuesday night, if you didn't know that. Somebody shout now. Now, at birth, when you entered the world, they wanted you to shout. Did you know that? The first thing they do is they spank you on the tail so you'll cry. They'll take that little suction thing and suction out your nose and your mouth. And if there's no sound and there's just gurgling and there's fluid in your lungs and fluid in your nasal passages and fluid in your mouth, they got to get it out because they want you to cry. They want you to shout. They want you to make noise. That's a sign to the mama. That's a sign to the doctor. It's a sign to everybody in the room. It's a sign to the daddy that's there telling her to push, 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 push. When that baby comes out, they want to hear the baby cry. They want to hear that baby shouting. It's interesting that the first thing that comes out of a baby is a cry, a shout. It's the first thing. And it symbolizes something. Did you know that when the baby cries, it also symbolizes the first breath that that baby takes? Look at somebody and say, breathe. It, it, it's breathing. Rita says it, just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. There's a Hebrew word 
that means breathe, and it's called Ruah. 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 It's a Hebrew word. Breath of God. Just breathe. So when a baby comes into this world, and the first thing the baby does is breathe, Ruah, the next thing that comes out of his mouth is ah! I think it's interesting that our military have picked up an adaptation of that word Ruah. And depending on the branch, it's Ura. There's several variations of it. Some of you military folks, let me hear what the word is. Huyah, Ruah, come on, somebody. Uh Uh-huh, see, they know what it is. Isn't it interesting that the military has picked that up? And it actually means breath of God. And the very first thing that a baby does is breathe and then shout. Isn't that interesting? And then from that moment on, the baby is told to shh, be quiet. Can y'all not get that baby to stop crying? Can y'all not get that baby to shut up? Can, not, can you not get that baby to hush? Hush, hush. And the rest of our life, we're told to hush. Kids run into the house. They're full of life. They're laughing. They're jumping. They're dancing. And what do we say? Shh. Quieten those babies down. If you don't hush, I'm going to spank you. So y'all were shouting a minute ago. Yeah. From the moment after the first shout. We're told to be quiet. And from that moment on, the devil's agenda is to steal your shout. My God. That ought to be a revelation to somebody. That ought to open somebody's eyes. Somebody should have just had an aha moment. Somebody's eyes should have just opened. Somebody's spirit should have just opened. So much so that about 10 or 15 or 20 of you should have jumped up on your feet and begin to shout and run around this room because you've decided he's not going to steal my shout ever again. I've got a revelation. I've got insight. When I shout, I breathe. When I breathe, the breath of God comes into me and a shout comes into my spirit and I've got to lift up a shout. I've got to breathe the breath of God. I've got to let the anointing of the Holy Ghost fill my lungs and I'm going to breathe and I'm going to shout and I'm going to tell it from the mountaintop that Jesus Christ is King. He is Lord. He rules. He reigns forever and ever and ever and ever. Somebody shout now. Did you know that shouting is a Bible way to praise the Lord? I used to serve on the board with Rod Parsley for about 12 years. I told somebody the other day, he was a, uh, he was a Baptist preacher. And his sister Debbie got very sick. She was going to die. Doctors had given her up. There was really no hope for her. 
she was deteriorating physically and they heard about a businessman that had gotten a hold of the Bible and the word of faith message and they thought if we could get to one of his meetings you know maybe he could pray the prayer of faith and she could be healed so they took her to Norval Hayes meeting and told her who she was Rod said I pastored this little Baptist church up in Columbus Ohio I've been to that old sanctuary it's part of the Bible college now Brittany went there and when he got there he didn't just pray for her he put his arms around her and began to pray and three hours later Debbie was healed and so he went back to his little Baptist church <laughs> somebody say a little Baptist church and he said I've been reading the Bible read the book of Acts he said I took Debbie to Norval Hayes she's healed and he said now in this little Baptist church he said, from today forward, anything that happened in the book of Acts can and will happen here. So I want to make a declaration to you today. You can get out your phone and turn on the audio so you can get the recording if you want to. They recorded it in here. We're going out live stream, but I want it to get out because here it comes. Anything that happens in the book of Acts can and will happen here. Because the devil has tried to steal our shout for way too long. I was raised in this. I was raised in Pentecost. And I thank God for my heritage. My granddaddy Ball planted 67 churches in his ministry. He raised three people from the dead. He had every imaginable miracle. I told you a couple Sundays ago how my daddy was trying to fly like Superman when he was six years old, jumped out of a tree with a towel on his neck, on his back like he was Superman, fell to the ground, broke his neck, and was paralyzed from the neck down. Granddaddy prayed for him and God, prayed for him and God healed him. And those are, that's just one of hundreds and hundreds of miracles that he had in his ministry. And we've seen them too. We've had them too. But the devil's tried to steal our shout. A year ago, last month, coronavirus became a news item released around the globe. Shut down world economies, shut down nations, shuttered businesses. 200,000 businesses in America closed. 60% of them never opened back up. And the church, the church of Jesus Christ in a lot of places has put their head in the sand. In the sand. You say, Pastor, are you not afraid? No. If I get sick, God will heal me or I'll go to heaven. But until then, I'm going to live till I die. I know people that have died. I'm sorry. I hate it. But there are more folks dying of fear than there are dying of coronavirus. They say 99% of people that get that can be recovered, can recover, can be healed. But in Revelation, what's that verse read in Revelation? Revelation what? It's what? Revelation 21.8. She told a lie when she was a kid and her daddy made her read that verse. She knows it. It says, all liars have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But if you read the whole verse, it starts off, it says, and the fearful. 
the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, liars, adulterers. There's a whole list of sinners there. But the, he starts off and says, the fearful. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So what are you afraid of? I've had coronavirus twice. It's gone. I've had a lot of things. I've had bronchitis. I had pneumonia. But it can't stay. It it can't stay. Because when it comes, it gets it comes into contact with Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And I read in my Bible that by his stripes I was healed. So when coronavirus or leukemia, or cancer, or heart problems, or sickness, or disease, or anything else comes into contact with you and the power of Jesus Christ in you, it cannot stay. See, the the problem is, is a lot of people in the church don't know that. So they just open the door and say, well, I guess... I've got this and I've got that. The doctor said it, so I've got this and I've got that. Don't ever say it. When they give you a report, the only reason you should ever even get that report is so you know how to pray. And you never repeat what they said. You don't say, I've got. You say, the doctor gave me a report, but I refuse it and I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I don't accept it. By his stripes, I am healed. His royal blood is flowing through my veins, and I will not accept it in Jesus' name. I am an overcomer through the word, through the blood of the Lamb, and the word of my testimony the word of my testimony. I'm an overcomer through the blood of the Lamb and my shout. Does that help anybody? So let me just give you a couple quick scriptures. There's power in your shout. Somebody shout power. Your shout will cause the walls of Jericho to fall flat. It has been proven. You didn't hear me. Your shout will call, cause your walls to fall flat. I don't, I don't know what kind of walls you have. I don't know what kind of walls your Jericho is. I don't know how thick they are. I don't know how tall they are. I know that the walls of Jericho were wide enough they could build a house on it and chariot could ride, ride around it with horses. I know it was so high they couldn't climb over. And however tall or however wide it is, when they shouted, the walls fell flat which means they weren't pushed over. They didn't have some kind of apparatus to push them over. They didn't have tanks to push them over, to pull them back. They didn't use dynamite. They didn't have anything like that. What they did is they shouted, and God used the power of the shout to somehow affect the molecules and the atoms in the structure, and they began to shake and vibrate, and they began to crumble until the walls fell flat, and they went over the rubble into the city to capture the enemy and to defeat the enemy. So whatever walls you have that you are facing, whatever walls are in front of you, whatever battle you are facing, whatever your generational curse is, your shout will break generational bondage. Your shout will cause the report to change. Your shout will break the back of lack and poverty and and financial challenges. You ought to be shouting right there. You ought to be shouting right there. Nicholas, can you help me? Take this horn. And every time I shout, shout now, I want you to blow it. He can play better than I can. Shout now. Come on, somebody, shout with him. Now listen to me. Right at the bottom of that slide, you see the verse, Hebrews 11, 30. And here's what it says. By faith, by faith, by faith, we've just come out of a series on faith. You ought to know what faith is. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell flat. But they had to be obedient to the word of the Lord, which was to shout. 
As a matter of fact, he told them to walk around quietly for six days, once a day. And then on the seventh day, go around seven times. And he told them all of those times, those six times, and then seven times, which is 13 times. He said, as you go around that city, he said, be quiet. Don't say nothing. Keep your mouth shut. Shut up and march. Shut up and march. Shut up and march. Touch somebody and say, shut up and march. Because he knew if they said anything, they would start mumbling and grumbling and complaining. And they would be saying, why is he having us do this? This is stupid. This is silly. How can we defeat Jericho with these kind of walls if all we're going to do is just walk around? And we've got, the, we've got the priest and they've got the ram's horn and they're out in front of us and they're blowing that horn. Blow that horn. Shout now. How in the world is this going to help us defeat the enemy? And see... He knew that they needed to keep their mouth shut because if you start talking, you'll talk yourself out of your miracle. Somebody negative will come along and say something negative and cause you to go, oh, yeah, let me think about that. Well, I better not shout. I better not do this. I better not do that. And we, and we allow the enemy to steal our shout. So he told them, march and don't say anything until I tell you. But when I tell you, when I give you the cue, when I shout to you, shout now. He said, you better shout with everything that is in you. And you know, like the baby getting that first breath, when you shout, the breath of God came into the baby. When you shout, the Hebrew word for breath is ruah. When you shout, you are lifting up a praise to God and the breath of God is filling you. The breath of God is full of the anointing of the God. You miss that. I said the breath of God is full of the anointing of God. So when he breathes in you, when you shout, something supernatural fills your lungs, goes into your body, gets in your cells your blood carries it to every part of your body and something supernatural begins to take place on the inside of your body just like when the walls of Jericho begin to shut and tremble and shake and they shouted and they fell when you shout something happens inside of you shout now shout now shout now Come on, shout, shout, shout. Hallelujah. Shout now. You say, well, Pastor, what, what should we shout? Well, there's plenty of things to shout. I don't have time to preach it all today. But you can shout yes in agreement with what you've prayed, with what God said. You can shout hallelujah, which is the one universal word of praise that's understood in every language around the world. Or you could just get creative and shout, Jesus. 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 Because the Bible says, listen, listen. The Bible says, when you say the name of Jesus, Demons tremble. They start shaking in their boots just at the mention of his Jesus. So when you are facing walls, opposition, doubt, fear, trouble, opposition, circumstances, faces, I don't know what it is. When you are facing the enemy, Start off quietly just as a warning whisper. Jesus. It's a secret weapon. Jesus. You're just giving the devil a little precursor. Just giving the, the devil a little warning. What you're saying is Jesus. What you're saying is I'm about to shout his name. And when I do, something's going to happen. Some walls are going to fall flat. I'm giving you a chance just to go on and leave quietly, to get out of here, to get out of town, to go, to go, to go, 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 go. But if you don't go, it's going to all break out on you. Jesus. 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 
Jesus, 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 shout, Jesus, shout, shout, shout now, shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Oh Jesus. I, I got a lot more preaching. I'm, I'm on my, I think I'm on my second slide from the introduction. But here's what we're going to do. If you need a miracle, stand up and walk down here right now. If you need a miracle, stand up and walk down here. I don't care what kind of miracle you need. If you need a miracle of any kind, run to this altar. Come on, run to this altar. Run to this altar. Come on, run to this altar. He's in the miracle business. He's in the miracle business. He's in the miracle business. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Here's what we're going to do we're going to repent first. You got to repent. The Bible says, unless we repent, we cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Everybody lift your right hand and pray this prayer. Just say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I repent of all of my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Come in fresh and new. Baptize me with all you have. Fill me with your spirit now say devil I'm through with you get out of my life get off my back and leave me alone I belong to Jesus I am his child I am his miracle he is a wonder worker he is a miracle worker and from this day forward I serve Jesus now lift up a shout of praise right now Been teaching you for for years really not just months but years about faith I guess I'm a faith preacher I've been preaching about faith and the power of your words Friday night pastor Evans had us put our hands on our mouth and begin to pray over our mouth our words because a lot of us, we get along pretty good until we open our mouth. And then our mouth gets us in trouble. Because we say stuff we shouldn't say. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you right there. Because we've all done it. Is this okay? So just put your hand on your mouth. And begin to declare. We're going to make some declarations. You need a miracle? The best time to get a miracle is when you need one. We're going to start off with your hand on your mouth and say, I serve a miracle God. I serve a miracle God. Jesus is his name. He gave power to us. To become the sons of God, the children of God. Therefore, we have all the rights, all the benefits, all the authority that He has given to us as His children. We have been grafted in to His vine and we belong to Him. 
I belong to him and everything he has is mine because he said so I surrender I'm yielded to the Spirit of God to fill me to baptize me to lead me to use me any way he wants to use me Jesus I'm yours use me fill me give me a testimony that will advance your kingdom your mighty name in Jesus name I declare and decree by the Word of God that the miracle I need now is mine it will not delay it is on the way now I receive it I declare it I decree it I believe it it's mine in Jesus name no weapon formed against me will prosper but in the name of Jesus my miracle is now my miracle my breakthrough my turnaround is now not only that the favor of God the anointing of God the power of God is coming upon me in such a mighty way that everything I do is blessed and highly favored the blessings of God that are on me are gonna spill over into my family to my neighbors to my co-workers everywhere I go people will be saved people will be healed people will be delivered in the name of Jesus not because of me but because of him and his power through me in Jesus name I declare it I receive it in Jesus name I am healed I am saved I am delivered everything my hand touches is blessed I am a magnet to the increase of God finances resources bonuses raises are coming into my hand when somebody is sick and they come into contact with me the Jesus in me will heal them by his stripes we are healed 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 in Jesus name now lift up a shout 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 come on don't stop shout 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 hallelujah And it's stand right there. Rita, come and help me. I want about I want about ten of you to point your hands toward this camera. About ten of you to point your hands toward this camera. About ten of you turn around and point your hands to those those two cameras back there. And I want you to begin to pray for those that are watching by internet right now. If you're watching by internet right now. And this word is resonating in your spirit. I want you to begin to put it in the chat, chat box. I'm healed. I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I got my breakthrough. Whatever it is that you need, whatever you've been praying for, whatever the miracle is you need, tell us right now. Put it in that. And we are agreeing with you. People are, people are praying and agreeing with you right now. There is power in agreement in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it right now. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree the salvation of those watching on the internet right now. Those watching by internet or those that will watch by television. In the name of Jesus, we declare and decree it now in Jesus' name. Every person that is sick, we declare you are healed in the name of Jesus. We break every spirit of infirmity. We break every spirit of leukemia. We break every spirit of cancer. We break every spirit of heart disease. We break every spirit of diabetes. We 
break every assignment, every blood clot, every brain aneurysm. We break every assignment in the name of Jesus. We break the assignment of stomach problems and colon problems and kidney problems and back problems and feet problems and neck problems, whatever they are, whatever spirit of infirmity is manifesting, we break it now. Shout now in Jesus' name. We break it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name in Jesus name Nanette Joey has been attacked with the spirit of infirmity you know that when you guys have linked yourselves with us on so many levels there is a price to pay before he called me up here I went over there and I anointed some prayer cloths you'll take one to the hospital room You'll take one to your house, to your bedroom, to your kitchen, to your car lot that is closed right now. And I'm going to say to you without an ounce of emotion and without, without an ounce of doubt, no weapon formed will prosper. He is walking out of that hospital with no infection and no surgery. That lot will reopen there will be record sales. You will begin to defy the odds of other car dealers who cannot get cars on their lot. They are coming to that lot supernaturally. The tithing covenant is yours. You know it, you walk in it, you live in it. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout now. Out of your mouth. Shout now. Out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. Out of your belly. Shout out of your out of your belly, get your hands, get your hands on the belly. Hallelujah. Yeah, mama, so call on a mosaic and a baby she gave. Run on a mosaic, Luya, not a mosaic, run okay. Lay your mosaic, eat a mosa, run on a mosaic, get a baby, shake it, a baby, sing it. Lay your mosaic, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh yeah. Never lose its power. Never lose its power. Those of you who came down here who need a miracle, put it on your put your hand on your belly right now. The word of God says, out of your belly. belly. Not your neighbor's belly, your belly. Will flow rivers of healing and anointing and prophecy and breakthrough. Put your hand on your belly with your left hand. Raise your right hand of authority. Yes. Begin to decree and declare over your life. It is yours now if you want it. That's what he says to you. It is yours now if you want it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. We declare it. We declare it. We declare it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, come on, Jesus. begin to declare it with your right hand lifted up. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, rivers of, the head, of living of water, rivers from the top of, of their head water. to the soles of their feet, of living water, the healing water, water is full of power, healing and water, and wisdom, and direction, and guidance, and breakthrough, and delivering power. Be healed. Hallelujah. Be Hallelujah. Healed. Hallelujah. He's doing it. He's doing it right now. Right now. You came for a miracle. It's right happening now. right now. Shout. Right Praise now. Him. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Now. Right now. Yes, 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 yes. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Danita, it's happening right now. Healing water. Right now. Right now. There's your miracle. We call on healing water. There it is. Right now. Right now. We call on healing water. We call on healing water. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, Cheryl. Come stand right here. Here, hurry, hurry, hurry. Come here, Chanel. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach your hand towards Gerald. 
and shout, Sylvia. Sylvia. You are healed. You are healed. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are healed. You are healed. Arms work. Arms work. Legs work. Legs work. Everything works. Everything works. Language works. Language works. You are healed. You are healed. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Come out. Come out. Every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of infirmity. Come out of Sylvia. Come out of Sylvia. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We declare healing. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Shout now. Shout now. As if it were already done. Shout now. John Foyt did not bring this, but he ignited the spark, the fire of what was here. Amen? So we're going to go with it. Not tonight, but next Sunday night, the first Sunday night of May, we're going to come back in here for Chattanooga Revival. We'll be here Wednesday night for first Wednesday. You don't want to miss it. Next Sunday morning, we'll be back here. We'll continue this series because I didn't even scratch the surface. So we'll try to finish the message next Sunday, or we may not. <clears throat> but Sunday night, we're going to be here. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. We are praying, we are fasting. We are preparing. We have worn out many of the volunteers. And hopefully they've gotten refreshed a few days. We tried to give you a little break. So we're going to look at Sunday night, first Sunday night. See what God wants to do. But I need you to help me. I need you to use this. power of life and death is in your tongue I need you to spread the word something's happening in Metro Tab something's happening in Chattanooga yesterday we had our school of ministry after the Friday night there were three ladies here Friday night and yesterday that had not been here for the last three weeks they just heard about it they drove one of them drove four hours from Hazard, Kentucky to be here Friday night and Saturday morning. Two ladies with her drove two hours to get to Hazard and then the four hours here. They drove six hours to be here on Friday night and then to be here on Saturday morning. We've had people that have driven from Canada, Washington State, Florida, South Georgia, Alabama, other parts of uh, Kentucky, Louisiana, Virginia, West Virginia, People have been coming to see the fire burn. 
People want to see the fire burn. I need you to help me spread the word. We're continuing. We're going to continue on Sunday night, first Sunday night, May 2nd, next Sunday night, and see what God wants to do. I'm asking you to be here. Look at your neighbor. Pastor's talking to you. Say that. Pastor's talking to you. Did you hear what he said? Look at him. Preach to him for me. Say, Pastor wants you to be here. He needs your support as part of this house. He doesn't ask you for a lot, but he's asking you to sacrifice a couple of hours beyond your regular schedule on a Sunday night. Sunday is still God's day. So he's not out of order. Come on, preach to him. He's not out of order. He's not asking too much. This is our church. And God is trying to do something. And we need to be a part. So the pastor's asking you to be here next Sunday night. Will you? What'd they say? What did they say when you asked them? If anybody told you no, bring them up here. The Bible says, mark those that cause division among you. This is a Metro Tab moment. I'm, you think I'm playing. I'm serious. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You're not here by accident. Even if this is your first Sunday, you're not here by accident. So how many will help me? Let me see your hand. If you'll help me, you'll spread the word. Get on social media. Get on your telephone. Tell your neighbors. You may be the only thing standing between them and hell. So we need to help each other. Amen? Everybody stand. Thank you for being here today. God is working. Wednesday night, we'll be here first Wednesday. How many will be here first Wednesday? Huh? Oh, it's not this week. I'm sorry. You got, you got, what's that, 10 days. Yeah, read your service guide. We do have life groups Wednesday night. We do have youth. We got a lot of things for you to do. But next Sunday we'll be here, and then Sunday night. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're watching by internet, thanks for joining us. If you have prayer requests, send those to us. Prayer at Metro Tab. We love you. God bless. You are dismissed. Have a fabulous afternoon, a fabulous day. Your best is yet to come. or metrotab.net. Thank you again so much for watching. Welcome home.